Sam Moser here. So this is the third video in my truck bed camper series and in this one I'm going to cover everything I've done since the last video and that's mainly going to be getting everything on the exterior installed and weatherproofed. I've done a bit of work on the interior as well but I'm going to save that to be the focus of the next video. Quick interruption, I know this video is a bit overdue but there was a lot I wanted to get into it. I've also had a chance to test out the camper, so at the end I'm going to give a few comments and reflection about what works well and what could be improved in the design. Alright, back to it. As you can see, I've gotten quite a lot done since the last video where I was still just painting it, but I want to start with how it secures to the truck bed. I installed an eye bolt on each side of the front of the camper. I did this after I was done painting but before I assembled the upper section of the camper to the lower section. Turnbuckles are used to fasten the eye bolt on the camper to another eye bolt inside the bed. Here is how I made the eye bolt assembly that fastens into the bed rails. I saw this on a post online in the Nissan Frontier forum, and they work alright, but the washer feels a little on the small side. In the rear, I added another set of eye bolts to the camper. I wanted to make use of the bolts that the tailgate cables normally clip into, since I knew this would be a strong mounting point at the back of the truck. I bought another set of tailgate cables and created a loop in them with wire clamps. I then used turnbuckles to secure the cable to the eye bolt. This seems to hold the camper in place well and provides plenty of support to the back of the camper. Since the back of it extends past the edge of the truck, the back needs a strong support so it doesn't tip when putting weight on the rear end of the camper. I do plan to add another tie down point or maybe some ratchet straps to provide more peace of mind while driving. Next, I want to go over some notes on the overall assembly of the camper. I didn't film much of the process of attaching the upper section to the lower section after painting, but I'll cover the main points. Also, I did the roof insulation, wiring, and paneling before attaching it so that it was more accessible to work on. A stainless steel piano hinge spans most of the width of the front wall of the camper. This is the main connection between the upper and lower sections. I used these same hinges for the door and folding back wall. I'll put a link to them and other useful stuff in the description below. The roof is pretty heavy, so these gas springs make it easier to open and close. Plus, they hold the roof up while you fold out the back wall. It took a lot of trial and error to get them mounted in just the right place. The windows for the camper are shed windows that I bought online. They have tempered safety glass and were much cheaper than RV windows. The ones in the front and back open halfway and have screens to keep the bugs out. When installing them, I used butyl tape as a weather seal. 
Not sure if this is the best thing to use, but it remains flexible and seems to provide a pretty good seal. It's also really sticky. Once I pushed the windows into place with it, it didn't really seem like they were going to come off without some force. After installing them, I went back with a combination of a utility knife and a putty scraper and removed the excess butyl tape sticking out around the edges so it looked a little neater. Before attaching the fan to the roof, I added these little metal brackets, which I'll explain in a minute. For the roof vent, I also used butyl tape to seal it up, and I had just enough to make it around the edge of it. I bought a 30 foot roll, and these 5 windows plus fan took all of it. I pre-drilled holes in the roof for the screws because the ones I used here were not self-drilling. The butyl tape stuck all over the drill bit, and after seeing that, I thought about not pre-drilling the rest of the holes, and I didn't on the next, but it made me too nervous that I might crack the wood, so I pre-drilled the rest. Be careful not to put these screws in too tight, or you can crack the plastic. I did this in one place, so I learned this one the hard way. About those metal brackets. Due to the slant of the roof, I needed to mount the fan with the hinge on the tall end so that even if it's raining, I can open it a little for airflow without letting water in. But, this is backwards from how they are normally mounted. You usually put the hinge facing the front end of the vehicle so that the wind while driving won't rip the lid off. I added the metal brackets to allow me to put a couple bungee cords over the lid to hold it down securely while driving. One thing I haven't really shown yet is how the back wall and the roof fit together. I didn't really fully work this part out until I was assembling the two sections after doing most of the painting, but basically I cut a piece of wood into this shape that is connected across the inside edge of the roof. The surface here is angled such that it sits flat against the top edge of the back wall. It has another piece of weather stripping inside to create a tight seal along the top edge. The doors all use these latches. They are stainless steel and can be locked. In the door jam here, I added more weather stripping to create a nice seal. Along the sides, I used a garage door weather strip to create a seal between the upper and lower walls. I added holes along the bottom edge of the wall so these thumb screws could secure the sides to the base, pressing it up against the rubber strip. The bolts screw into these threaded inserts on the lower section here. These are necessary because the 5mm plywood used for the sides has a lot of flex to it. So this is what I had come up with and what I thought was going to be a good idea for connecting the top walls to the lower section, but it's actually been causing me a ton of trouble. And there's been two main issues. The first is that it doesn't apply even pressure to the bottom of the wall, and since it's so flexible, what actually happens is it pushes the wall down right where the bolt is, but in the sections between that, it's still bulging out. The second issue has been alignment. When I first put the threaded inserts in and drilled the holes, I didn't have the gas springs inside connected. And then when I reattached them, it actually shifted the whole roof forward. It's putting that much pressure on it and now everything was misaligned by just a little bit. So to compensate for this, I've tried adding kind of a spacer between the hinge and the back. I've played with the placement of the gas springs so they don't put, uh, push the roof past where it needs to go, but I haven't been able to get everything to align quite right still. And what I'm thinking is I'm gonna need to add kind of a rigid piece of material that goes across the whole bottom edge of this wall to evenly apply pressure and on the alignment, I might just figure out a way to make the openings bigger. So, I glued a couple strips of plywood together and then cut recesses where the thumb screws go. I used a hole saw to cut bigger openings in the side panels, then I sealed up the holes and painted everything to match. Here is how they attach and clamp the sides into place. A 
along the back edge, I added two handles and a PVC drip edge to redirect any rainwater from the top edge of the door. I added this piece of gutter style roof flashing to the front edge. This will redirect any water running down the roof over to the sides. Before I had this, I tried only using a bit of rubber stripping to cover the hinge, but the water was then streaming down the back wall, bombarding the window, and some was leaking in. So, I sealed up any gaps I could find in the window and added the gutter. With nicer RV windows, you might not have this problem, but since doing these two things, I haven't had any other leaking. I wanted to end this video with a few comments and thoughts on the design. We got a chance to test it out last weekend, and it worked great. We drove for a few hours through a heavy rainstorm, actually, and nothing leaked, so I was really happy about that. I really love how compact it is when folded down for driving, yet it's still pretty spacious for two people to sleep in. I also didn't see any noticeable drop in my gas mileage. I know there's probably a little decrease from the weight, but the design keeps it from adding any extra wind drag. At the beginning of the video, I showed the process of how I load it into the truck. And this thing's kind of a bear to load. It takes quite a lot of brute force for me to slide it into the back of the truck by myself. You know, if there was another person helping me, it would probably go a lot quicker. But if there was one thing that I would improve upon on the design, it would be this. If the sides of the camper extended out past the sides of the truck bed, then you could jack it up on some stilts and drive the truck in and out from under it. And that's how traditional kind of commercial truck bed campers do it. And now I see why it makes a lot of sense. In my case, there's probably multiple solutions for this. I could build some sort of hoist system in the garage, or I could add support points for attaching loading bars that extend out to the sides. Um, and I might look into something like this in the future, but for now it's okay. As always, Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or useful, please hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks, see you later.